Howdy folks, this is Checkers back again with another episode of our Mass Effect Andromeda Let's Play, this time with episode 13, and we are here on the Bridge of the Tempest, made a few changes to the costume, the uniform colors, and uh, armor colors, we'll see how that works out. For now though, we are leaving Eos behind. And... Let's see where we can go from here. So we've got some other places we can explore. Let's see. We can run the scanner just out here. We can go thither. Different means of travel. Not bad looking, though. Anomaly on sensors. Okay. Probes launched. Satellite detected. Okay, let's see. What do we have here? Scientific monitoring satellite launched by early explorers to EOS. Its mission was abandoned when the original settlement of EOS failed, but it has gathered valuable data from H-276. Okay. Plus 50 Milky Way research data. And... Let's head out to Nanook. is a hydrogen methane gas giant debris in its orbit suggests it has seen ket visitors but nothing for us apparently that brings us to asteroid rich asteroid, its dust indicates the same scourge contamination that affects Eos. Plus 112 iron. Okay. And off to H060. Not sure why it pulls up so close and then backs off though. That's a little odd, but analysis H060 and its satellites attract debris from Pythus asteroid belt, resulting in multiple dust rings. Numerous meteor meteorite impacts have left H060 rich in nickel, but these same impacts have made mining more difficult. Okay, and then we have Pele. Oop. We have tidal heating and bombardment from Pythus. Pythias? Something like that. Asteroid belt has aggravated Pele's volcanic activity. Methane in its upper atmosphere contributes to the planet's scorching conditions. And finally, Konsu.
Anomaly detected. Ooh, anomaly. First, let's look at the analysis. Kansu's oddly mild climate, given its orbital distance and rich resources, make it a candidate for mining outpost. However, its unexpectedly rugged terrain has tabled discussions indefinitely. And whoop, overshot. Here we go. Deploying probe. Tracking a huge mineral deposit. Oh, beryllium. See, beryllium's what we needed to make a Black Widow sniper rifle. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we can now probably make our Black Widow. Must keep this in mind. Well, I mean, we need to go back to the Nexus, but nobody said we can't explore, right? So, let's get to it. That's what we're out here for. We're taking the boat out for a spin. Okay. So this is where the human arc first entered Helios. Heck of a wake up call. No one lets Drac make the pizza again. The mushrooms he thinks are safe. Not quite. Okay. Where are I'm we? I'm picking up something. Okay. Anomaly detected. And oh oh. Deploying probe. Anomaly found. Starship wreckage. Shuttle spotted. Drifting. It's a strange name it's for a starship. Catastrophic electrical damage. Oh, so this... This is where we first ran into the Scourge, which is what they said when we got here, but, you know. I was still on Drax Mushroom Pizza. That's the research vessel. Hey! Dr. Aridana informed us of. There are no life readings within. And we she leveled. Uh, plus 530 experience, gained 50 remnant research data. Interesting. Well. Is that because they're attached to the Scourge, or because they were researching the remnant? Anyway, analysis, the Exodus. No, sorry, Eudoxus. Sustained pervasive damage due to Scourge flares that wiped out all internal systems. Dr. Eridana's crew was killed instantly. Vessel adrift unsalvageable due to radiation. But... Back we go here. So we're over there. I guess we could hit this Habitat 7. Get a look at uh, our first landing point. With tempestuous eyes. Oh, I don't see what's wrong with this planet at all. Everybody loves having a planet with an evil cloud speared through it. Anomaly detected. Just one. Uh, I'm thinking it's this glowy thing right here. Probes launched. Satellite detected. Okay, analysis. A standard monitoring satellite. Its registration shows it was deployed accidentally from the Hyperion during its collision with a Scourge. Ah, oh, well, you know. We gained 50 Milky Way research, so shine on you crazy satellite diamond. And... Let's head to Vinland, shall we? We'll see if the Vikings assail the high black seas. Anomaly on sensors. Okay. So let's look for the glowy thing. Moves too slowly on that view. Although, maybe this one isn't glowy. Fine. We'll sensor away. Uh-oh. There's something right there. Probe away. We've got a crater. Yep. A crater caused by the impact of heavy debris, possibly from the Scourge. The meteorite still contains valuable resources. And a 270 experience cool crater. And so Vinland is a small rocky world with a pressure cooker atmosphere composed of argon and carbon dioxide. Its valuable cobalt deposits would require robotic mining due to volatile surface gases. Good to know. Let's hop on out to Heluland. Okay. 
Anomaly detected. I'm gonna guess it's this. Right? Right on the money. Let's take a look at the planet first. Named for the first landing of the human explorer, Leif Erikson Heliolens crust is largely composed of aluminum with sulfur deposits brought to the surface via volcanic activity and... Probe's launched. Tracking a huge mineral deposit. Probe has found us aluminum by 60. And okay, just so, you know, we don't have any... You're saying it wrong. Look at the way it's spelled. It's actually aluminum. It's an American and a British thing. It's all okay. We're friends here. Okay, off we go. We actually do say some words differently. We actually spell them differently and everything. Okay, Markland. It's one of these. Guess it's this one. Analysis. Markland is a large frozen world with a surface composed mostly of silica with deposits of cobalt. The planet's albedo is unexpectedly dark, suggesting geological activity or contamination from the scourge. And we are at 100% progression for Ericsson. So we shall be off to... Pfeiffer. May as well knock it all out now. I mean, we got all that beryllium, which means a really cool sniper rifle is coming. Right after the mushrooms. This is about as far as the Nexus surveyors could get before, well... Let's see what's waiting here. Anomaly um, on sensors. Okay. What you got? We got this. Deploying probe. Tracking a huge mineral deposit. Okay, well, let's go see. Come on, beryllium. Baby needs a new sniper rifle. Or two. And analysis, the unusual mineral, mineral composition of this asteroid suggests it may have origins outside the Pfeiffer system and became caught in the sun's gravity. And gave us 58 aluminum. Okay, we'll go across the board here to Corvath. Thanks to Corvass thin atmosphere, its brutally cold deserts can reach extremely high temperatures in direct sunlight. Limit exploration to twilight hours only. Doesn't look like it's something we can explore anyway, so off we go. Okay, and next is H480. Analysis, thick dust clouds, dangerous electrical storms, and heavy gravity render H-480 inhospitable even for well-equipped Krogan explorers. Oh well. Better luck next time, Krogan explorers. Okay, and rare. It is a beautiful, like, galactic map, but it feels a little unfinished. Maybe because of the whole backing up to park thing, not sure. Okay, so, rare. 
Though the planet is highly toxic to most known life forms, Rare's helium-rich atmosphere appears to host enormous colonies of fungal spores. Well, we know where to send all the fungal spores. And off to H461. Analysis, this outlying world is comprised of iron and frozen nitrogen. One oddity stands out. Certain geological features suggest the nitrogen seas were once liquid. Huh. Okay. And now we are off to H-479. And it does look like we can go to the big... ...thing in the back. That looks spookily like a black hole. Hello. We come in peace. Extreme radioactivity and high velocity winds make H-479 a poor candidate for mining despite its rich metal deposits, a potential candidate for future endeavors. Good to know. Okay. Really? Really? Okay. Well, I guess. Because this is safe. Right? This is safe. Sure. What could go wrong? We come back to the Nexus a thousand years from when we left? Let's see here. Black hole. Hmm, class care, care black hole, H012 Ketos analysis. Even at this distance, the black hole presents a risk to onboard ship systems. The accretion disk around it is composed of the remains of at least one solar system destroyed by the black hole's formation and gravitational pull. Caution is advised. Well, okay then. Why don't we just get on out of here? Way, way on out of here. Ryder, we seem to be having problems leaving the black hole, but Drax Mushrooms made it all better. Ah, familiar territory. The Nexus has been here for months. Still not enough time to survey it all. Okay, let's see what's in the neighborhood. Anomaly detected. Okay. Start with the anomaly. Oh, we out here, huh? Probe away. I found something. Sweet. He's o. This is where the Ezo fairies live. Data Element Zero Analysis. An unusually rich deposit of Element Zero, Ezo. This appears to be a primary source broken up by space-time distortions in the Scourge. And a plus 33 Element Zero, which is actually a pretty good haul for us. So, let's head to, head to the Nexus last, Ma Huan. Bye, Ezo fairies. I think Drac made a deal with them for some more mushrooms. Could be wrong. Could be the last mushrooms talking. Or the fairies, one of the two. Zheng He? Ma Huan, oh no, that's the system. So this is Ma Huan, is largely composed of hydrogen and methane. Its relative proximity to the Nexus makes it a useful core discharge site. Plans for a Helium-3 skimming station are in progress. 
H599. Sensors. Okay. There's our glowy anomalous friend. Deploying probe. Detecting what's left of a ship. Oh, starship wreckage. Uh, let's see. Nexus 4623 is the ship's identity. Ship name, Caryatid. Crew complement 5. Status reported missing, presumed lost. The Caryatid is a heavily damaged and is heavily damaged and adrift but salvageable. And we got things. We got a lot of things out of it. Corian nav processor, Ezo shunt, portable rebreather, nano crystal modules, things and stuff. And let's see. The planet is with its distinctive ring. H599 was used as a rendezvous point during the Nexus early attempts at exploration. Pilots still use the term a 99 run for a short, short journey with numerous hazards. And let's see, let's head over to Gongzhen. Gongzhen is a small but scorching world, partially due to a crushing nitrogen carbon dioxide atmosphere. Evidence suggests its ricey rings were once a small comet. Icy ring was once a small comet. I don't know if I'm just having problems reading this font or what, but I seem to be having a problem reading it. Okay, and off to Fei Jin, maybe? We have another anomaly here. And probes launched. Getting a scan. A volcano. This volcano has recently erupted. Fei Jin's unusually strong gravity, 3.2 Gs, means the lava flow is localized and may be valuable for study. And plus 270 experience. And backing out to look at the planet, we learn that Feijin is an extremely hot and volcanically active world. A thick carbon dioxide and ethane atmosphere covers an iron-rich surface with deposits of calcium. And finally, off to the Nexus. what I'm going to do is actually stop this episode right here because the planetary exploration isn't really super exciting so maybe what we'll do is call this like a 0.5 episode well I already called this 13 so we'll just make 13 a short episode of planetary exploration and I'll try and get 14 in right behind it so that all being said we still have quite a bit. We have a task list here in the Nexus. That's kind of cool. At least we know what we're getting into. I wish it was quite as obvious when we were on the ground, but it really isn't. And 
I guess we can look at the analysis for the Nexus before we go. Headquarters of the Andromeda Initiative, the Nexus is a massive space station designed to anchor the returning arcs, process resources, and support colonists before their departure to new worlds. All new arrivals must pass quarantine. Station name is Nexus. Length is 15.47 kilometers when completed. Anchorage wheel diameter is 5.3 kilometers and status is under construction. Alrighty, so we will pause here and be back. And for the moment, I would like to point out that if you look in the upper right hand corner, you will see a small letter I with a white circle around it. These are cards and links to other videos that I've made. Also, I have a Twitter link in the description of the video and on my channel main page. If you're on mobile, it'll be on my channel's about page. I would like to thank you guys for being the best community out there. Truly, you guys are awesome and you make this an absolute joy to do. And I really want to thank you for that. I'd also like to thank you for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining and maybe just a little informative. I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and share if you so desire. And to ask you, above all, to please take care.